or done. Because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. You had one job. It's twin girls. <laughs> Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rocks Rewards. My family has run Krause Village Store since 1931. My mom had a stroke and needed help. Hospice of the Panhandle helped my brothers and my sister care for my mom at home. Anything that she needed, we were able to do that by just listening to them and following their training and advice. They were my eyes and ears and helped tremendously during this time. Don't wait to call Hospice of the Panhandle. April is National Donate Life Month. WV Medicine is joining the effort to raise awareness for organ donation. Did you know that more than 100,000 people are waiting for life-saving organ transplants? One donor can save up to eight people through organ donation, provide sight for two people through cornea donation, and restore health for more than 75 people through tissue donation. Join WV Medicine and help spread awareness about the gift of donation. And if you haven't registered, visit registerme.org. following is a special sports broadcast presentation of Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. Play ball! It's time for the fun and excitement of West Virginia high school baseball. Today's game is being brought to you by Parsons Ford, Rocks, the Heffley Motor Company, the Wagner Law Firm, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, the Skinner Law Firm, the Browns Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's, Carter Myers Automotive, Century 21 Modern Realty Results, The Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Mother Shuckers, L.A. Roberts Jewelers, the Dutch Miller Auto Group, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. And now for the pregame show. Let's go out to the field and join our talk radio WRNR broadcast team. Welcome to P.O. Faulkner Park here near Martinsburg High School getting ready for some Martinsburg Bulldogs baseball on this Wednesday afternoon. A special start time for Martinsburg versus Mercersburg Academy. Here on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin with you on the call. Colin McLaughlin, our on site producer, and Nick Verzellini back in the studio. Special start time today as Martinsburg has a National Honor Society uh, ceremony or uh, banquet this, this evening that uh, Coach Byler of the, of the Bulldogs said that six or seven players have been invited to, and he's very proud of that. We'll hear from him in the second segment uh, of the. The pregame show brought to you by Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. But the Bulldogs here just still one loss on the season as they come in to play Mercersburg, hosting Mercersburg. And trip we saw just last night, Bulldogs were able to get the 7-0 win against Jefferson. Carson Boober pitching another gem, and they were able to get the early run support for him in that one to improve to 14-1 on the season. Again, only that one loss down in, in Myrtle Beach. The, the Bulldogs seem to be rolling so far this year. Yeah, they came out last night, uh, you know, a big, uh, big matchup with Jefferson. And, you know, it was going to be their, uh, uh, you know, kind of game of the week. And uh, everybody was pretty excited about it. But they come out and kind of put a damper on, uh, on the Jefferson crowd pretty quick, give Boober that uh, – run support and it's always 
a lot easier to play when you're up, especially when you get up four runs, five runs, and then, in this, then after two, seven runs, and then he just didn't look back. But you know, hats off to Jefferson for what they were able to do the final five frames and play nose to nose with a extremely good Martinsburg team, number one in the state right now at the moment. And Jefferson had five underclassmen, so it was a great uh, it, w- it was a great time, great game to watch. So you know Martinsburg's rolling. Um, Hopefully this isn't one of those games that kind of trips them up as they kind of got a lot, got a big uh, schedule this week. And Mercerburg coming in with a bunch of post-grad kids, you know, in their 13th year. And we see some guys here from Virginia Beach, from Korea, from, you know, Carlisle, PA, Hanover, PA, all over the place. So it's going to be a pretty good test for Martinsburg here today as well. Right, Mercerburg so far this year on with the, the games that are listed so far this season, one and five. Got a couple on max preps that haven't been filled in, but hey, that includes a, a nine to six loss to Washington on March 20th. So not their first time seeing the EPAC so far this year. They also have an 18 to 10 loss to Lindsley as well. Their one win listed on the season was against Broadford and Christian Academy, a five to one victory there on March 30th in a doubleheader that they played there. But uh, you know, a lot of runs given up in these in these losses for Mercersburg. 11 in one game, 8 in another. As you mentioned, 18, a 16-run uh, outing for another opponent for them. So we'll see if Martinsburg's powerful offense that sometimes I know, doesn't show itself through an entire seven-inning game trip, but usually throughout this season they've been able to, even if it's just one inning, able to get to that pitching eventually and open the game up. Yeah, they do a really good job when, uh, you know, that, like you say, that one inning. But they create those innings. You know, they get a guy on, and they do a lot of, uh, you know, stealing. Um, last night we talked to Coach Baller, and we seen, uh, you know, he's he's willing to bunt one through nine, put pressure on, and not just sacrifice bunch. They're pressure bunch, you know, where these guys put down really nice bunch down the line, and their speed forces uh, the defense to, to make mistakes. And so they'll take the runs however they can get them. I mean, they've hit the long ball. They've uh, they've hit back-to-back doubles and traded places and they've just hit two or three singles in a row, stole some bases, and, and uh, you know, had some first and third situations. So we, we've seen them utilize the squeeze and the safety squeeze, and just uh, they score in a lot of different ways. So when they do get those runners on, they generally create, uh, you know, innings where they can turn, get some crooked numbers on the board. With that, let's go ahead and we'll take a two-minute break here on the Skinner Law pregame show. When we come back, we'll have interviews with both coaches for Martinsburg and Mercersburg. This is EPAC Baseball, West Virginia High School Baseball, on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Trump's plan to stop woke gender ideology from poisoning our kids? We'll investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks that participate in sex transitions of minor children. And Big Pharma's lobbyists should be held accountable too. Like Pat Morrissey. As a D.C. lobbyist, Morrissey helped steer taxpayer funds to a gender transition clinic for children and got rich lobbying for a drug company peddling puberty blockers. Morrissey's family still owns the D.C. firm that lobbies for a child transition provider with a clinic in West Virginia. Pro-trans liberal lobbyist, that's Pat Morrissey. The pro-Trump conservative businessman, Chris Miller. Miller supports Trump's plan to protect our kids. As the father of an 11-year-old girl, you're darn right. I don't want her sharing a locker room with biological males. Woke doctors are literally practicing mutilation, not medicine, and they should be in prison. I'm Chris Miller, and I'll sign that law as governor. Paid for by Miller for Governor. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. 
Welcome back to the Skinner Law pregame show on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, getting you set for Martinsburg versus Mercersburg baseball coming up here at 3.30. Before we get there, let's give you our coaches' interviews that we got in pregame, brought to you by Parsons Ford, 1400 Shepherdstown Road, and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. We're here with Murfreesburg coach Edgen. We're here. Uh, you guys are facing Martinsburg tonight. First of all, uh, for those of us on TV 10, Talk Radio WRNR, that'll be seeing your team for the first time, uh, what would you say you've seen so far from your team so far and how they've performed and what you've liked from them in, in the season? Yeah, we, uh, we're competitive. We, we try to put the bat on the ball every single pitch. Um, We've run into some some good arms coming through. Uh, I, th- I still think there's some more in there. Uh, got a good older group of guys that's going to compete for us the whole year. Uh, and yeah, I mean, coming into Martinsburg, you know, you see that they're 14 and one on the on max preps, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah guys, it's not your uh, first time facing some of the, the Eastern Panhandle competition here, or, uh, Muslim or uh, excuse me, Washington earlier this year, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, how do you like to uh, test your your team when it comes to the scheduling coming over here to the Eastern Panhandle? Maybe some some teams that'll give you guys a test. Yeah, we uh, you know try to make the whole schedule a test. You know, we're not looking for the the pushover win, so to speak. Um, we want to come and you know get a good gauge of where these guys are, and they can see where they stand against you know kids in the area and how good the other kids are, and vice versa. So. You know, we don't necessarily want to put any easy wins or easy losses on the schedule. We want to, you know, try to compete, and that's how we formulate our schedules. Uh, you know, our league's pretty tough. We're we're got another school, Hill School in Pennsylvania. We have four schools from, uh, I'm sorry, five schools from New Jersey. We go to New Jersey this weekend for some conference stuff. But yeah, it is what it is. You know, you travel, you you find that good competition, and and see how we fare. Where have you felt like you've wanted to see maybe some more improvement uh, on your team as you go through the season? Yeah, we we uh, we kick the ball around a little bit, not a lot. We just it's it's key moments in games where we don't make a play we should, and it just kind of turns into a more of a, a snowball effect there. Um, so minimizing the, the the big mistakes, so to speak, and uh, you know I I think we're the last couple games we've been hitting fairly well. Uh, and you know, just having a D behind our pitcher. So, and lastly, I'll just ask: when it comes to Martinsburg today specifically, what do you want your team to focus on? You know, I think everyone on our team knows what we're getting into. Uh, you know, the Bulldogs are pretty, pretty tough this year. But you know, we Monday and Tuesday we preach just competing. It doesn't matter who they are. I mean, game of baseball is funny. So you know, you could. They could be 26 and 0, and we have a good day, or vice versa. You could be 1 and 26, and you know that'd be it. But um, you know, just compete, compete every time you step in between the lines. So, all right, thanks for the time, and good luck. No problem, appreciate it. All right, here with Coach Byler, Martinsburg Bulldogs. Coach, start off last night. You go to Jefferson, you're able to get the win, seven nothing. Strong start to your offense, and then you had Carson Buber on the mound give you a strong performance, complete game shutout. How would you feel about the performance overall for the team? You know, you felt really good. Any time you can go to Jefferson and get a win in, the, in that kind of fashion, I think you feel good. I thought, told you last night, I thought our bats were really good early. Uh, Carson was phenomenal. Our defense was phenomenal. I thought we got a little lackluster with our approach throughout the middle. But, uh, you know, all in all, we're real happy to go to Jefferson and win. As you've progressed through the season here so far, just the one loss down at Myrtle Beach. Uh, where do you think your team can still make the most improvements as we get through you know, April and through the rest of the season? I think just just focus through seven innings. I don't know if we've played seven clean innings. Um, sometimes when we hit really well, we don't feel really well, and sometimes when we feel really well, we don't pitch really well. So we're just still trying to put it all together, which is a good thing. I don't think you want to peak right now. I think you still we're still working to play our best baseball. You get Mercersburg in here uh, tonight or this afternoon, and uh, – what have you been able to see or hear uh, about them so far in this season uh, when it comes to their performance and how what the team is that comes in here today to PO? I don't know a whole lot about them besides what you see on Max Preps, good friends with their coach. Um, you know, they're a very capable baseball team. They'll be ready to go. I know they play conference doubleheaders on Saturday, so I'm not sure that what that will do to our pitching. Um, you know, we, we threw Lane and Carson this week, and we got to save Christian for Friday, so we're going to rely on – some middle, some middle guys to get the job done for us. Jameer Brown going for us today. 
And finally, just what's the main thing you want your team to focus on in this one against Merc Mercersburg? You know, I just want us to play like we're capable of and, you know, make sure we take care of business today. It's a little bit unorthodox with a 3.30 start. Uh, we really appreciate Mercersburg being accommodating for our 3.30 start today so we can get our kids to National Honor Society. Uh, we're super proud of those kids that are getting inducted to National Honor Society. I think we've got six kids, six or seven kids. Uh, so super proud of them, just super proud of, you know, I said earlier, um, I think we have the highest GPA of any spring sport, so we're proud of that, and we're, we're proud of our accomplishments both on and off the field. All right, Coach, good luck, and thanks for the time. Thanks, Dylan. Those were our coaches' interviews, again, brought to you by Rock's Local Markets. Or, excuse me, brought to you by Parsons Ford. Rock's Local Market brings you our EPAC baseball roundup. Rock's with convenient locations around the eastern panhandle, fast, fresh, and friendly. Tonight, we'll have Musselman taking on Moorefield. Washington will be hosting Millbrook. Jefferson will go up against Goretti. And Hedgesville will be traveling to Berkeley Springs. With that, let's get you the starting lineups for both sides here this afternoon. As you see, both Coach Edgen and Coach Byler giving those lineup cards to the umpires at home plate. Starting lineups are brought to you by Trips Flooring. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring needs? Call Trips Flooring at 304-229-7009 or online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Let's start with the starting lineup for Mercersburg Academy. They'll be leading off with the center fielder number 12, Thomas Davenport. They'll be having Gavin Williams, first baseman number 7 in the two spot, batting third, catcher number 9, Brody Collins. Batting cleanup in left field, number 15, Hayden Shirk. Batting fifth, shortstop, number two, Augie Bennett. It'll be Tyson Brown, right fielder in left, uh, number 11, batting sixth. In the seventh spot, it'll be third baseman, number three, Sam Menendez. The pitcher will be batting eighth, number 10, Thomas Marchese. And batting ninth, second baseman, number four, Derek Park. On the other side of things for Martinsburg, it would be pretty usual lineup for the Bulldogs. Starting out, leading off is center fielder, number 25, Isaac Grove. Batting second, number five, shortstop, Carson Boober. Batting third, number 24, third baseman, Braden Oviedo. Cleanup spot will be Christian Alter, right fielder, number seven. Batting fifth, number eight, second baseman, Ben Reisenweber. Batting sixth, number three, first baseman, Owen Rupenthal. Batting seventh will be the pitcher, number 27, Jameer Brown. Batting eighth, number 20, the catcher, Braden Edwards. And batting ninth, number two, left fielder, Keegan Everhart. And today's weather looking good so far today. It's mostly cloudy, but 75 degrees. Slight wind, nice breeze here at P.O. Faulkner Park. Five mile per hour winds, 11 mile per hour gusts. Feels like 74 degrees, 50% humidity. No chance of rain that we know of for today, despite the clouds. And our weather is brought to you by CMA's dealerships in Martinsburg and Winchester. Proud to be the owners who just care more. With that, let's go ahead and take a three-minute break. And when we come back, we'll be ready for first pitch. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. We'll be back in three minutes. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. 
After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. When you are looking for the perfect gift, look no further than L.A. Roberts Jewelers at 146 North Queen Street in downtown Martinsburg. Choose from a huge selection of unique items from the finest diamonds that make your eyes sparkle to exquisite timepieces, figurines, and collectibles. Buying from L.A. Roberts Jewelers means that you've made the decision to do business with people who've excelled in the industry for more than 100 years. They'll be here tomorrow when you need them, and if you need your jewelry or your watch repaired, they'll do that too. L.A. Roberts in downtown Martinsburg. Old world jewelers for a new age. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park here in Martinsburg as we're getting ready for first pitch between the Martinsburg Bulldogs and Mercersburg Academy. Here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, it's Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin with you on the call. Colin McLaughlin, our on-site producer, and Nick Verzellini back in the studio. First pitch brought to you by the Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Give them a call at 304-263-4343. Starting things out, top of the first, it'll be Jameer Brown up on the mound for the Martinsburg Bulldogs, a sophomore, and with Braden Edwards behind the plate for the Bulldogs. And the starting battery brought to you by Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg. Call them at 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page trip. We're getting close to first pitch here. It'll be one of the youngsters on the mound for Martinsburg. And, you know, Coach Byler mentioned that they're going to try to get some of their their middle guys to get through this one as they had you know, Boober pitch last night, Lane DeLauder pitch earlier in the week, and going to go with Christian Alter against Spring Mills on Friday. So they're going to go with... The, the guys in the middle to get through Mercersburg here today. Yeah, I mean, their depth is what has them, you know, what, what has their record where it's at. I mean, there's you know, there's a lot of teams in the state that have a, a good one-two punch, and then, you know, third, fourth day out, you know, they have to, you know, they give up a little bit and, you know, of course, take a loss here and there because of that. But not Martinsburg. I mean, they, they seem to have the depth this year, you know, with, uh, of course, with the DeLauder and, and Boober, you know, kind of going out, kind of, you know, the older guys in the staff here. Then you have Alter and, and Oviedo. And then what we've seen uh, Owen Rupenthal can do in middle relief. And then, you know, they just continue to put guys out there on the mound tonight. You, have, you see Jameer Brown, who's a sophomore. Uh, possibly Parker Robinson, who hasn't seen a lot of action this, this year yet either. So after coming off that long week in Myrtle Beach and having a, a lot of games this week, they're going to uh, check, going to test that uh, the depth of that of that Martinsburg bullpen. Top of the first brought to you by Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations. Robert Field and Sons proudly serving our area since 1880. It'll be Thomas Davenport stepping into the batter's box for the first pitch. Jameer Brown will wind up, and it'll be fouled back by Davenport for strike one. Heard the Mercersburg coach say they're going to try to hit every pitch, and so far he's correct. One for one. The Brown will step back onto the mound as we get things going here. Brown winds, fires, 
The breaking ball is able to catch the outside part of the plate for strike two. Starting to get some spring weather. The outfield grass is starting to catch up to the turf and blend in a bit. Getting there. Yeah. Get, getting there. The 0-2 from Brown slides off the plate low for ball one. Like you told us, they are not going to try to hit every pitch. And another one for three. They're really falling off with the percentages. And that's another breaking ball that doesn't quite catch the outside corner for ball two. Thomas Davenport's a post-grad out of uh, Carlisle, PA. So what that means is he has uh, completed 12 years, and he's taking a post-grad here before he heads off to college to get one more year under his belt. And a 2-2 swing and miss from Davenport. Make it one one man up, one man down for Mercersburg. Jerry Brown opens things up with a strikeout. And with that, it'll be the first baseman, number seven, Gavin Williams, a lefty that steps into the batter's box. He's going to swing at the first pitch as well. Hits it the opposite way to left field, and it's over the head of Keegan Everhart to the wall. And then standing up at second base is Williams with a one-out double. Nice piece of hitting there from Williams. I think what he meant to say, they were going to swing at every first pitch. I guess so. He took off on there that are two one. for two on that yeah, one, for sure. He was sitting on that. The left-hander uh, got an outside fastball over on the right hand side of the right-hander side of the box, and he just uh, stayed behind it, stayed inside the baseball, drove it the other way, and uh, one-hopped that fence out there just below the scoreboard. Now it'll be Brody Collins, the catcher, that steps up, and uh, he kind of ducked out of the way of that one a little bit, backed him up, but it caught the outside corner for strike one. Another poster grad here, uh, a 13th grader, we call him. The one fouled straight back. Make it 0-2. I would say that Mercersburg's in Dodger blue, wouldn't you? I think you could call it that for Dodger sure. Blue, yeah. Gray pants, Martinsburg in the black with white hats, white pants. MH, or dogs across the chest. Out of the stretch, Brown looks back at... Williams on second, now comes to the plate, and that one's low and outside and gets past the glove of Edwards, so Williams is going to be able to go over to third base now with just one out, so it's a good opportunity for Mercersburg to open things up here early, potentially, and get themselves on the board. Yeah, Edwards didn't have much of a shot there with that when it got away from Jameer, uh, way over in the left-hander's batter's box to the righty, and uh, he got to the backstop pretty quick. Next pitch, 1-2 is high, maybe a little outside. Evens the count at 2-2. Two two. Jameer still hasn't got the, the spin rate on that curveball that he'd like to have. It's kind of hanging up there a little bit in first inning here. Brown with the runner on third goes back to the windup. 2-2, two, two, bit of a check swing. Doesn't quite catch the plate, according to the umpire. So the count moves to a full count. Three and two. A 50-50 pitch there, 2-2 two, two pitch, up a little bit. Here's a full count pitch, and it'll be fouled back. The Collins will stay alive. That was definitely there, a strike. He just tried to uh, throw it by him there. Collins, uh, wasn't, I'm not sure if he was expecting the fastball. He's a little bit behind it, um, kind of running out of the box with it there. So you'd think 3-2 with an out here early, he'd kind of sit on a fastball, but uh, he was a little bit late on it, but he did foul it back to the right side. So here's another full count wind up from Brown, and strike three is called. Hits off the glove of the catcher, Edwards, and has to be thrown down the first just to make sure. And there's another strikeout. He caught him looking there that time. He did go with the an all-speed pitch that was kind of down, and uh, the, the, the batter was off and running, thought it was ball four, but actually it was a drop third strike. To, Nice job there by Edwards. Go get it and uh, throw down to Owen Rupenthal. And great job by Jameer to cover the plate. First pitch to Hayden Shirk is a ball outside. It's a tough play with the man on third, drop third strike, because you have you know you're trying to get the runner out, you're trying to check check the guy at third, and he turns into a little bit of a pressure play. And the 1-0 will be taken for strike one. 
Hayden Shirk, a, a local from Mercerburg, a senior. Here's a windup from Brown at one and one. That one's inside and low. Bounces in front of Edwards. He's able to keep it in front of him. Yeah, that was pretty close. Almost caught the young man on the foot. He didn't give much ground. Yeah. He'll step back in. Another lefty for Brown to face. He struck out both the righties he's faced so far. 2-1. That one's high for ball three. 2 down here. Runner on third is Gavin Williams after his one-out double. The pass ball allowed him to get the third. Pitch from Brown. Finds the outside corner for strike two. The count runs full again. Nice pitch there, especially with the, the number four hitter up with, with the first base open, not one to come right down the gut. So he nibbled there on the corner uh, right at the knees. Just a great pitch there. If, if he misses, he misses. You know, the guys, number four guys on first. Swing and strike three. Three outs, all strikeouts for Brown. Strands the runner on third after the double by Williams. Keeps things scoreless. After one trip at bat for Mercersburg. And now the Bulldogs will come up to bat for the first time after we take this 60 second break. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Life is evolving. Over the past decade, the way we do almost everything has changed. Get on your phone, see something you like, click on it, and it shows up at your door. Why should the way you have your car serviced be any different? Why waste your time going to a dealership service department when Hager Sound Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to you? They service all makes, all models, and offer full parts and labor warranties. Hager Sound Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to your door or office and service your vehicle while you're doing what you need to be doing, conducting that business meeting or mowing the lawn. Why take time out of your busy schedule when you don't have to? Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet's friendly, knowledgeable staff will come to you where you live or where you work for full service maintenance. From oil changes to tire rotations, brakes, batteries, multi-point inspections, they handle it all. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet is committed to delivering the best of the best to their customers. Trust them to service your vehicle where you're at, at home or at work. Skip the time-consuming and terminal wait at the dealership. Schedule your appointment at FordofHagerstown.com or Hancock HancockChevy.com. Back here for the bottom of the first, which brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. Visit them at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. The Thomas Marchese on the mound for Mercersburg. The southpaw will give it a go with Brody Collins behind the plate as Martinsburg comes up the bat. Now, Tripp, you were just about to explain to me, but you can go ahead and explain it to everybody else, that uh, Jameer Brown listed as both the pitcher and the DH in yeah. the lineup here. Yeah, so they're going to utilize the uh, pitcher DH rule here that has been instilled. So should uh, another pitcher come in, let's say uh, let's, say, let's say Parker Robinson were to come in and Jameer would go to the, to the bench, he would, he would then become the DH for Parker Robinson. Oh, first pitch from Marquez. He hits. Isaac Grove between the shoulder blades. So it'll be one pitch and a, a base runner already for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's not how Mercerberg wanted to start, especially with uh, the speedy Isaac Grove. But it, it just protects it just protects your pitcher's arm. A lot of times your pitcher's one of your better hitters. You don't want him out of the game, so they'll take a pitcher after he threw 80 or 90 pitches and put him in a position to keep his bat in the game. This way he can stay in the game hitting here we go. And first pitch to Carson Boober playing shortstop today after complete game shutout against Jefferson last night. And he takes a cut at the first pitch, makes it 0-1 after the miss. Grove leading off on first. The 0-1 will catch the outside black there for <coughs> Mercersburg. 0-2. He Grove out there trying to figure the lefty out. He's seen him twice now. Lefty hasn't thrown over yet. 0-2 count here. We hear some signals being yelled out, so see what how they play it as Grove gets out. The 0-2 is high for ball one. Grove being careful over there. Uh, haven't seen a move, so just kind of getting a one-way lead there as the lefty comes set. One, two, low and outside. Collins has to move over to get in front of that one. Makes it two and two. 
He hasn't quite shown a, a tail yet. The young pitcher does seem to look to the plate when he comes to the plate, not to say that he wouldn't have a no-look throw over there, but he, yet he hasn't th shown it yet. As you see, come set, and then he looks at the plate before he delivers. Get a timeout from Boober. And this pitch outside into the other batter's box makes it three and two. Thought maybe Boober might uh, call time there after he's kind of froze there as the pitcher just locked eyes with with Grove. Good time to run here. And he does go, and it's a hit-and-run attempt. Boober fouls it back. Would have been a good time to throw over. A 3-2 count, probably Would definitely going. <coughs> We've seen Jefferson last night with some really good pickoff moves as Colin uh, was on the play-ball play, and, uh, you know, he, he called it out there. Their pickoff moves, uh, not, not many times did Martinsburg go back in without a close play. Here comes another 3-2. Grove will stay this time and again hit by pitch. Caught him in the helmet up near his face. Uh, scary moment there, but uh, Boober did a nice job of turning away from that. Caught yep. him in the bill of the helmet, I think, knocked it off. I'm not sure if it got him in the shoulder, then the helmet, or the helmet, then the shoulder, but didn't get a direct hit as it deflected off that bad. We have back-to-back -back hit by pitch here. <coughs> That's what's uh, that's what the helmet's for. So we're doing its job at least. But that'll put runners on first and second with no outs for Braden Oviedo, the junior third baseman. It's a good opportunity against Marquezzi. and put two guys on base with hit with uh, hit by pitches, and he's going to bunt the runners over and. Marquez, he can't make a clean play on it. So that's going to be bases loaded just like that. Oviedo gets himself to first base. Yeah, really nice bump. Oviedo far enough for him to catch her. Uh, so he couldn't make a play. Pitcher, lefty come off the mound. He has to turn, uh, you know, lefty's going to have to turn a, a 180 there to make that throw. True. He tries to pick it up, and uh, it was just too late as Martinburg put down another High pressure situation, you know, high pressure bunt there in that situation where you know, Marburg just doesn't give themselves up. You know, they, they bunt the ball pretty well. Being a lefty might help you with some pickoff attempts, get over there quicker, but it does make a play like that a little harder. Yeah, First he, pitch by Alters fouled off. Yeah, you're kind of blind. You have to come up and throw, you know, with your back to the base and uh, not knowing exactly where Oviedo was going down the line, but he was moving along pretty good. The young man just couldn't get the handle on the ball and. Bases loaded, nobody out. They're loaded for Christian Alter. The 0-1 oh count. He takes strike two. <coughs> we saw a few opportunities for Martinsburg last night against Jefferson. Despite the seven runs, there were some times where they weren't able to cash in all their runners on base. See if they can do it here. Marquezzi throws and... Alter almost a check swing as he hit, makes contact on that one, fouls it off down towards right field. Yeah, hey, Alter did a good job letting the ball get as deep as possible, you know, making sure it wasn't a, a curve ball. And it, as it kind of come back to the zone there a little bit, he just kind of fouled it off on the, on the right side. Marquez, he checks the runners. Now the 0-2 pitch. This one's going to be hit into shallow center field, and it bounces right in front of Davenport in center. And it's going to be a base hit, and two runners will score. Grove and Boober come across the plate to make it 2 nothing Bulldogs here with no outs in the bottom of the first. Yeah, I'm not sure there's many guys in the EPAC that you'd want up in that situation more than Alter. He's just been be coming through with some, you know, huge hits. He's, <laughs> his physique doesn't necessarily scream you know, number four batter or clean up batter, but his stats certainly uh, show what he can do in that spot, and he cleans up the, you know, he takes every RBI and cleans those bases off as many times as possible, as many times as we've seen, uh, you know, the opportunity he gets, he's, he's generally more successful than not. First pitch to Ben Risenweber, he squares around the bunt, not able to pull it back in time for the strike. Collins comes out from behind the plate to get the runners back. So make yeah. it 0-1. He definitely made an attempt there. It was it was off the plate. It was a ball, and he, he made an attempt there. Uh, and I think he realized it was going to be off the plate and not break back in. He tried to pull back, but it was a little late. 
Tough pitch to bunt. He's going to go for it again, but this time he fouls it off. Makes contact, but not able to keep it in play. So it'll be 0-2. Runners on first and second, no outs. Same situation that Oviedo just bunted in, was able to get himself an infield single, but now with two strikes, we'll see if he swings away. That's a good time to bunt there. You know, third baseman has to stay back to take to cover a third, so you're definitely looking at the second baseman, the pitcher, and the first baseman trying to make a play there. And he does swing away, but he swings through it, cuts and misses for strike three. Marquez is able to retire one batter in the inning keep those runners at bay at first and second. And with that, it'll be the first baseman, Owen Rupenthal. Playing first with Jameer Brown on the mound today. A lefty against lefty matchup. Marquez, he looks back at second at Oviedo. Now he'll come to the plate. First pitch. Catches the outside corner. Yep. For strike one. He, uh, he took that strike, uh, took that pitch as far as he could out there and still get a strike. As lefty came across the his body there and caught that outside corner. Here's the 0-1. And it'll be strike two. Get it outside as well. Looks like a might be a little bit of a wide strike zone here today. So you have to see if uh, batters will adjust. Marquez, he shakes off the 0-2. 0-2 pitch, and catcher sitting up out there again. See if he can hit that spot again. He goes for it. This one's way outside this time. Make it 1-2. and two. See the first baseman, he's kind of just staying in an ultra hip pocket, not a real hold there. Shortstop keeps looking uh, Oviedo back as Marquez, he keeps a close eye on him there. 1-2 on Rupenthal, chops it in front of Marquez. It's going to be another tough play for him. He's able to make the throw over, and he does get the out at first. Runners advance, though. He gave him a swinging bun out of that one. Yeah. So that'll put Oviedo on third and Christian Alter on second with two outs here in this 2 nothing game in the bottom of the first. Jameer Brown. Big Try to give himself some more run support. Yeah, big two-out single last night uh, against Jefferson. Martinburg was up one nothing, had base runners on. Jefferson was just about to to get off the hook there when uh, when Brown had a two-run single there that gave Martinburg that three nothing lead early, and they never looked back. First pitch to Brown is high and outside for ball one. Shortstop keeping Alter honest over at second base. He's going to swing through this 1-0 pitch for strike one. To make it even, one apiece. Two outs. See if Brown can potentially drive in two more runs with a, with a base hit here. Marquez, he's ready. Here comes the pitch, and it took a little too long. Brown calls time just in time. Yeah, Marquez, he, he has a, works at a slower pace. The batters are kind of stuck up there, and he's checking those runners. And uh... Here comes the 1-1. Not able to catch the outside part of the plate. It'll be ball two. Strike zone might be a little wide on the left side of the plate, but not able to get, get it on the right side. Two and one. Catcher moves out there. Here he comes. And Brown's going to fly this one in the center. It looks like Davenport has a chance to make the play, and he will make it. That'll retire the side. But up before Martinsburg puts two up on the board. A big time. Base hit by Christian Alter with the bases loaded. Gives the Bulldogs two runs in the bottom of the first. That will take a 60-second break and be back for inning number two. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. 
The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Top of the second inning here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Martinsburg able to get themselves out to a two to nothing lead against Mercersburg. Top of the second is brought to you by Hefley Motor Company, located at 993 Hedgesville Road in Martinsburg. A nice place to do business. But Jameer Brown couldn't quite add on to things, but he will go back up to the mound with a two-run lead here in the top of the second after giving up just one hit, a double, in the first. So he'll deal with the 5-6-7 batters for Mercersburg. Really, not a bad uh, inning for Mercerburg, considering they put the first, you know, the first four guys got on base, and then they were able to get, you know, a strikeout, a ground out, and a fly out. Even though Jameer did hit the baseball pretty well, and it carried, you know, I don't know if that's uh, what we're going to see today, if that's for things to come here, you know, the way the ball is carrying. But uh, he certainly uh, got a good, got a good medal on it there, and sent it into one of the deepest parts of the field there. But it was tracked down there at the warning track. First pitch to Augie Bennett, the shortstop, number two, will be taken for strike one. Now Brown, rock and fire again. This one's hit on the ground towards second base up the middle. Carson Boober goes to his left, makes the play for out number one. Big chop right over the pitcher's mound. Boober stood there, kind of. Chop stepped, waiting for the hop he wanted, picked it up, and sent it across to Diamond for out number one. Nice play. Catcher Edwards going up the line, doing his job, and outfielder Alter, so we've seen a, a very uh, mobile defense. And first pitch swinging again for Mercersburg is Tyson Brown, number 11. The right fielder comes up and fouls this one off towards left field. There's some statistic to say your best opportunity is the first pitch. It's true. The pitcher wants to get ahead with a first pitch strike, so more likely to get one that's hittable in the zone. You know, one swung on and cut through, missed, strike two. Brown, the underclassman here in the lineup, the, I believe the only underclassman and the 10th grader here uh, from PA. Brown fouls off the 0-2. Straight back. Keep the count at 0-2. Step back in. Another lefty in the lineup for Mercersburg. Wind up from Brown. Breaking pitch. Gets in it in the zone. Fourth strikeout in four outs for Jameer Brown. That was the best curveball he's thrown tonight as it uh, it really broke. Starting to see a little better spin rate on that than he had the first inning. Uh, get a little better grip on it. and Probably worked on a little something in the dugout. And that ball definitely had a little more bite to it than what we see in the first inning. So adjustments made there. And a really, really nice curveball there dropped in for a strike. First pitch to Sam Menendez, third baseman, will be low outside. Martinsburg's JV team rolling in. They're going to take some hitting practice, it looks like, as they're going to head up in the cage while the, Bulldog, the senior Bulldogs play this matinee here. Brown wind up and delivers one high. Make it ball two. It's a 2-0 with one out. 
stand in. Menendez will pop this one foul straight back over the press box. Brings the count to two and one. Now, Jameer Brown, the windup and the pitch is low for ball three. So one out, still bases empty for Mercersburg as their number seven hitter, Menendez, tries to get something going here in the top of the second. Here's a 3-1 from Brown. He will take it for ball four. He, not sure whether he was just making sure or if he didn't really think it was a ball. I mean, he stood in there for a second, but now he'll walk down the first. He's just being courteous. <clears throat> I think he might have been being courteous. So first uh, walk of the night issued by Brown. Uh, again, like a 50-50 pitch there. So um, lefty up, big hole to hit through as, as Ruben Thrall is holding. It'll be the pitcher Marquezzi taking ball one. Marquezzi throws left. Now we see that he bats left as well. There you go. Martinburg playing kind of even up, not really expecting the bunt, even though Oviedo walks it up from third. He's not really in. So it's hit on the ground to second base, and Risenweber will make the play for the third out. So there was two outs after the ground up by Bennett and the strikeout by Brown. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. Just one base runner left on for Mercersburg after that two-out walk. And Martinsburg will try to add on to their lead in the set bottom of the second. We'll take a 60-second break and be back with more West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. You had one job. It's twin girls. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park. Bottom of the second inning on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Brought to you by the Berkeley County Health Department. Prevent, promote, protect. Offering public, clinical, and environmental services at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. 2-0 lead for the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Here against Mercersburg. They were able to get a 2 RBI single from Christian Alter in the bottom of the first. And now it'll be Braden Edwards that leads things off for the Bulldogs in the bottom of the second. And Thomas Marquez's first pitch be high and outside for ball one. This pitch is fouled the other way. Had some air under that one, but couldn't get it going in the right direction. Make it one and one. Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin with you on the call here for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Foul ball on the one and one count. Colin McLaughlin, our on site producer, Nick Verzellini, back in the studio. 1-2 count to the catcher, Braden Edwards for Martinsburg. Sophomore battery today is Jameer and Edward batting 7 and 8 and pitching catching. Uh, pretty, uh, it's, it says a lot when you're, you know, you're pitching and catching and, and they line up each day as, you know, as underclassmen for a team that's you know, at the moment ranked number one in the state. After a ball for 2-2, two and two, that one is a strike three looking for Edwards on the outside part of the plate. 
So make that the second strikeout so far for Marquezzi. And with that, yeah. second time we've seen the uh, lefties. Uh, excuse me, Keegan takes the ball. Well, the second time we've seen the lefty, left-handed hitters here. Uh, you know, the the plate is a little, little bit wide there, and uh, off the plate a little bit to the left-handed hitter. So, going to have to adjust. And now the one to Everhart catches the other corner of the plate, makes it one and one. Marquez, he quickly comes with this one. That one's way inside. Brushes Everhart back a little bit. Make it two and one. So the lefty pitching to the left fielder. Marquez, he will come with two one. Everhart hits this one the other way. See if it can get there and just barely off the glove of Gavin Williams, the first baseman. In foul territory. Young man went a long way from first base and almost made that catch. Very athletic first baseman as he got way down there in the visitor's bullpen. And I thought there for a minute he was going to make an over-the-shoulder catch there. Uh, just come up a little short. The count's now two and two to Everhart. Throw, and this is going to be a base hit right up the middle to the right side of second base. Keegan Everhart get himself a one-out single to get the Bulldogs a base runner. And that will bring us back to the top of the lineup for Isaac Grove in center field, who didn't get much of an attempt at it at bat against Marquez the first time around, let off bottom of the first and was hit by a pitch on his very first pitch he saw. Marquezzi as Grove squares around the bunt. It'll be a steal attempt by Everhart. Tag safe. I think the throw down by Collins would have been in time, but it was a little to the left. And you saw Augie Bennett, the shortstop, had to reach back across his body to go get the ball and then bring it across and try to make the tag. And that was just enough for Everhart to slide in. Yeah, if it's on the other side of the back, I believe they have him. Uh, so the count is 0-1 after Grove pulled back on the bunt. Now this 0-1 pitch is low for ball one. Barnesburg, once again, getting them on, getting them over. See if they can get this, get them in here. And the one-one, Everhart checks his swing, and it'll be ball one or ball two, excuse me. And they'll check with the umpire back behind the pitcher's mound and second base. But as you've mentioned before, Trip, that'd be a tough angle. Yeah. Even if it did look like he went around, it, which it did, it did not seem that he did. It's a tough angle to get a to get an appeal out of of, of a guy back there. Two one, a cut and a miss from Grove makes it two and two. Everhart solid lead at second. Bennett keeps him close. Now he's going to run. Oh, and they stepping off the bag is. Marquez, they're going to have Everhart in a rundown. Throw to third. He tries to slide in head first, but they get him out. Everhart just getting a little too aggressive out on the base paths. And now two outs, a 2-2 count. Bases are empty again. He was able to steal third base last night. Um, you know, so tonight maybe feeling it a little bit. Uh, nice job by Mercersburg. It's a big gamble when you do that because you really have to break you know, early or right at, you know, right at the pitcher's break. And uh, and if you break early and, and they catch you, then it's it's pretty much a rundown situation. 2-2 two, two is outside for ball three. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to go basically just before first move, and you have to have a read, like a one look, two look, or something to that effect. And uh, he just uh, had a read, and pitcher changed it up and caught him off guard. 
And the full count pitch is high up at the eyes of Grove, so he's going to reach base for the second time with without a hit. Hit by pitch in the first and draws a traditional walk in second. So if, see if he steals. You see, runner on first with two outs for Carson Boober now. Grove sticks at first for the first pitch, which is high above the head of Boober. Unless, unless uh, Grove gets a really good read on him, I expect that with two outs he might hang out unless he gets into a, a running count with Boober at the plate. Here's the 1-0. Boober's going to hit this one in the center field. It looks like it's going to be right at the center fielder Davenport, though. He makes the catch for the third out. So Martinsburg is able to get themselves a couple runners on base, but not able to cash in in the bottom of the second. We'll go to the top of the third. It's 2-0 Martinsburg. We'll take a 60-second break and be back with more West Virginia High School baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rock's Rewards. We got double the Rock's gas rewards. Six cents off a gallon. You had one job! It's twin girls. <laughs> Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rock's Rewards. Republican Wayne Clark, your delegate for West Virginia's 99th district. Income tax cuts for all West Virginians? Wayne delivered. School choice for kids and families? Wayne delivered. Protecting our kids from online predators? Wayne delivered. Republican Wayne Clark has worked to pass some of the most conservative policies in our state, protecting the rights of the unborn and our Second Amendment rights, bringing good-paying jobs for West Virginians. Vote to re-elect Wayne Clark in the Republican primary on May 14th. Paid for by Wayne Clark for West Virginia. We'll go to the top of the third here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 between Martinsburg and Mercersburg. Top of the third is brought to you by the Dutch Miller Auto Group. Dutch Miller Automotive Group is home of friends and family pricing. Still two to nothing Martinsburg. It's Mercersburg with their third chance up at the bat against Jameer Brown. Let's see if they can do some damage. It'll be the bottom of the order for Mercersburg to start things out. The nine hitter, second baseman Derek Park. After first pitch taken for strike one. After Martinsburg sent eight to the to the plate in the first inning and scored a couple runs left two. That time they were only able to bring four to the plate, even though they had a bit uh, a uh, base on balls and a single. They were caught stealing. And the home ba- um, um, umpire will say that the 0-1 is a check swing that couldn't be held back, make it 0-2. And, and strike three the same way. Fifth strikeout for Jameer Brown, this one on three pitches. Derek Park hails from Korea. What we have here on their uh, roster. This is uh, Derek Park and his brother Albert Park, both 11th graders. Uh, I guess his brother, I'm not sure, but they show two different hometowns, so maybe they're just cousins. Yeah, perhaps. As it shows uh, yeah, Albert Derek. Park from Incheon, Korea, and then Derek Park from Jeju-C. Je- Jeju C. Jeju C, Korea, yeah. It says Korea, but I guess you could assume that that's South Korea, uh-huh. but if it were for... As we go back to the top of the lord of the order, Thomas Davenport, who struck out swinging, first time up, he's taken the first two pitches for balls. Jameer Brown now up to five strikeouts on the day. He's only given up one hit through two and a thirds inning of work, and the count will now run to three and zero. Oh. He's given up one walk as well. Step back in. They've all been swinging except for one. Brown's five strikeouts so far. 
Count runs a three and one after Davenport takes strike one. And now the 3-1 pitch is a swinging strike two. <coughs> Brown's able to get the get the count back full after falling behind 3-0. Yeah, early in the season, Brown had fought a little bit of uh, uh, struggles. He was walking some guys, had some control issues early, but now he's, today he's having a really good outing, pounding the strike zone. And there's the swinging strike three for the sixth strikeout for Jameer Brown. And we see he's uh, certainly, Margaret does a good job of uh, taking these young men, a lot of touch feel, a lot of bullpens, uh, you know, working on uh, mechanics, uh, charting pitches, uh, understanding first pitch strike. So these pitchers come with an approach, and uh, this is uh, so by far, you know, one of Jameer's best outings as he pounds a strike zone. But just when we say that. The pound, uh, Gavin Williams with the ball there as for a hit by pitch. Evan Williams has been a tough out here for Jameer. He doubled off of him the first time, so maybe he was just saying that's what you get for hitting me off the fence the last time. <laughs> there you go. So uh, Williams able to get on base in each of his first two at-bats. First one, he hit the ball out to the wall. Now this time the ball hits him. So two outs for Brody Collins, number three hitter. Struck out swinging his first time up, and uh, there goes Williams stealing. Throw down by Edwards. Not going to be in time as Williams slides in on his feet in the second base. Nice job by Williams there, especially on this uh, turf. We've seen a lot of visitors come in and slide through. Boober held the tag on him as it was just a tick late. and But if he'd have slid through, Boober had him right there. But he held him to the back there and was able to complete the, the stolen base. The 0-1 pitch from Brown. That's going to be a breaking ball doesn't quite get back in to the plate it was able to push Collins back a little bit turn away from the ball had Cody uh, had, had uh, Brody Collins there uh, dancing as it broke back in and one will actually be a step off back towards second base to keep Williams honest so another running and runner in scoring position for Mercersburg, they were able to get runners on second and third in the first inning. Now the 1-1 one, one is taken for strike two. But Brown was able to get out of that jam. Excuse me, it was just a runner on third. That's been one of just three base runners for Mercersburg, and it's been one in each inning. And now it's a swinging strike three in the dirt. Drop third strike will go down to first base for the third out, and that's seven strikeouts for Jameer Brown through three innings. And once again, Mercersburg, just one base runner, and they leave him on the bags. So we'll go to the bottom of the third, still two to nothing Bulldogs. We'll take a 60-second break and be back with more West Virginia high school baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Trump's plan to stop woke gender ideology from poisoning our kids? We'll investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks that participate in sex transitions of minor children. And Big Pharma's lobbyists should be held accountable too. Like Pat Morrissey. As a D.C. lobbyist, Morrissey helped steer taxpayer funds to a gender transition clinic for children and got rich lobbying for a drug company peddling puberty blockers. Morrissey's family still owns the D.C. firm that lobbies for a child transition provider with a clinic in West Virginia. Pro-trans liberal lobbyist. That's Pat Morrissey. The pro-Trump conservative businessman, Chris Miller. Miller supports Trump's plan to protect our kids. As the father of an 11-year-old girl, you're darn right. I don't want her sharing a locker room with biological males. Woke doctors are literally practicing mutilation, not medicine. And they should be in prison. I'm Chris Miller, and I'll sign that law as governor. Paid for by Miller for Governor. Is that what you said? And we're back here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, bottom of the third inning between Martinsburg and Mercersburg, and we have ourselves a pitching change for Mercersburg. It's brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-3361 as we try to make sure we 
get locked down the changes for Mercersburg. It looks like that Thomas Marchese, after two innings of work, has moved over to first base. The first baseman, Gavin Williams, has moved over to third. And the third baseman, Sam Menendez, has moved onto the mound. So Marchese gets through two innings, gives up three hits and three walks, two runs, or excuse me, yeah, two runs, two strikeouts. Not a bad outing for the young man against a, a really high-powerful Martinsburg offense. First pitch from Menendez is taken for strike one. The bottom of the third inning is brought to you by Modern Realty Results, the team at Century 21, Modern Realty Results, and Larry DeMarco and company. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state, they have you covered. Second pitch was a ball, makes it one and one. And the one one will be in for strike two. Ball had a little bit of run. Looked like it was going to be outside, and it ran back in. So uh, not a tremendous amount of velocity out of Menendez, but the ball is dancing a little bit. Now the one two pitch to Oviedo <laughs> is fouled off. So he'll keep himself alive. One two breaking ball. He had to stay with it. So Menendez looks into the catcher. Now wind and fire. This one's going to be hit in between the third baseman and shortstop. 5.5 hole. Oviedo will lead off the bottom of the third with a single. Just stayed back, waited on that pitch to, to dance and across the plate, and he was able to drive it into the hole there. So Oviedo has that bunt earlier, now a base hit. So having a good day at the plate, doing what's, uh, doing what's asked of him. And that'll bring up Christian Alter to the plate, who had a bases-loaded single in the first inning to drive in two runs. Those are the two RBIs so far on the day for Martinsburg. As this first pitch to Alter is low and outside, Collins able to corral it, make sure Oviedo stays at first. This one's going to be hit fly ball to right field the opposite way. The play is going to be made by Tyson Brown. And that'll be one out on the inning. Nice play there by the right fielder. The ball was hit a mile high. And uh, looked like that the young man was going to lose it there for a minute as the wind blew it back. But he gathered it in as he chased Oviedo back. So that'll bring up Ben Reisenweber to the plate. Struck out swinging his first time around. That one's outside for ball one. And the next pitch will be low and outside for ball two. Yeah, the velocity's down a little bit, but the ball does move and... Uh... Sometimes that's even harder to hit. A good compliment coming in behind the harder throw on lefty is the righty with a little bit of movement there on his fastball that even though he dropped off some of the velocity, he's got Martinsburg out in front a little bit. That will induce fly balls when you're out front like that on your front foot. Usually lazy fly balls. 3-0 from Menendez. Just catches the black on the outside part of the plate, makes it 3-1. Oviedo leads off of first base in this 2-0 game, bottom of the third for Martinsburg. And now the pitch on the 3-1 will be low and outside for ball four. So that'll put runners on first and second with just one out for the first baseman, Owen Rupenthal, who has a bit of a swinging bunt with one out in the first inning. 
to advance runners, and now he comes up once again with those two runners on. Let's see what he can do this time. Now with the new pitcher. First pitch from Menendez. It's going to be a called strike one. Curve ball dropped in. First pitch curve. Menendez is going to keep Martinburg guessing as to what pitch he's going to throw. Looks back at second. Now comes to the plate. This one's going to be hit the center field. Davenport stops and now has to go in on it and makes the catch. Oviedo thought about tagging up and I think that was the sound of Aaron Byler yelling, no, no, go back. Yeah, again, out on his front foot. Uh, Menendez has the Bulldogs at the moment kind of out on their front foot, inducing some lazy fly balls, catch the ball at the end of the bat out in front of the plate. So the runners stay on first and second. Now Jameer Brown, the pitcher, will come to the plate. He's going to foul off the first pitch back towards the softball field. Brown flew out to Davenport in center field, just like Rupenthal just did in the first inning to retire the side. So now he gets another chance with runners on first and second and two outs. Here's the pitch, and that one's going to nail him in the back. That breaking ball got away from Menendez a little bit, it looked like. So that'll load the bases. For Braden Edwards, who so far this year has already hit a grand slam against against Musselman. Yeah. Courtesy. Logan Wilt will come on as the courtesy runner at first. Bases loaded for the sophomore catcher. Trying to do a little damage, give Martinsburg a little more cushion here. Is looking for a big two-out hit out of him. So the lefty will come to the plate. First pitch from Menendez is going to be a called strike one on the outside portion. Nice pitch by Menendez. <laughs> 0 and 1. Here's the pitch from Menendez. It's going to be fouled straight back by Edwards for strike two. Menendez up top, 0-2, two strikes, two outs. Base is juiced here. Martinsburg looking to to their sophomore catcher to add to this lead, and Martinsburg trying to minimize the damage here. We're looking. 0-2, breaking ball, not able to break back to the outside part of the plate. Makes the count one and two. Mercerberg playing straight up, not in any hold. Outfielder straight up, infielders playing deep, looking just to try to stay in the no doubles and hopefully get a ground out or a fly out. And, and Edwards is going to hit this one back in the center field for a base hit. One run will score, second will score easily. Edwards is going to be able to get to second base as that one was kind of hitting the gap. Davenport had to take an angle to make sure that didn't get all the way to the wall. So that's going to be a two RBI double for Brayton Edwards. Big hit there with two strikes, two outs for, you know, that's what, it's just a great job of, for Edwards there. He's seen it last night out of Jameer Brown, the other sophomore, a, a two-out hit against Jefferson that uh, gave Martinsburg a, a three-run lead. Now you see a two-out base hit with two strikes uh, from the sophomore catcher. So just uh, big things happening at Martinsburg this year uh, with their underclassmen. And uh, I think you're going to see big things happen from those two as we they move through their junior and senior years. First pitch to Everhart almost runs in and hits him. A breaking ball, but just ends up a ball inside. 1 0. So make it 4 to nothing, Martinsburg. With two outs in the bottom of the third. The bunt attempt by Everhart. He's going to try to get this one on base, and he stays, gets it uh, infield single, but they're going to catch the, the base runner. Was that a courtesy runner for yeah, for the catcher? That was, was uh, R.J. Brown. R.J. Um, Brown was caught between second and third. Yeah, I think he was anticipating Wilt breaking on that. Wilt yep. was kind of waiting for it to get by the pitcher. At that point, he got clean to the third baseman there, and uh, 
and uh, Wilt had retreated and caught R.J. in the middle there. So not sure exactly what the call was there or who to who to put that on. But regardless, Martinsburg's uh, inning ends on the bases. I guess uh, you might have wanted uh, liked Wilt to go home on that one, but you know it was a bit of a tough play as it got out there towards the pitcher pretty quick. But with that, we'll go to the top of the fourth. Martinsburg's able to add two and make it a four to nothing ball game. Take a 60-second break and be back with more West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. April is National Donate Life Month. WV Medicine is joining the effort to raise awareness for organ donation. Did you know that more than 100,000 people are waiting for life-saving organ transplants? One donor can save up to eight people through organ donation, provide sight for two people through cornea donation, and restore health for more than 75 people through tissue donation. Join WV Medicine and help spread awareness about the gift of donation. And if you haven't registered, visit registerme.org. Providing reliable protection since 1877, we are Farmers and Mechanic Insurance Companies. For over a century, we have been dedicated to provide dependable insurance protection and excellent customer service. We specialize in auto, home, farm, and business insurance. Our products are backed with personal, hands-on service. You can trust us to protect what matters most to you. For all of your insurance needs, there's Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies. Top of the fourth here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, brought to you by the Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company. Reliable coverage since 1877. As the first pitch of the top of the fourth is hit on the ground, right at the first baseman, Owen Rupenthal, for the first out. So that'll retire uh, Hayden Shirk, cleanup hitter. That bar was struck pretty well. Nice job by... uh... Old Rubenthal just to stay down and corral that thing. He was like a hockey goalie out there, just got wide. The big first base was a mitt down, stayed down, and he was going to block it up, and he was able to glove it cleanly and make the play. First pitch to Augie Bennett is strike one, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company. You can call them at 304-263-0809 for a quote today or visit fmiwv.com. And Brown's second pitch will be way outside. That one got away from him a little bit. Brings the count to one and one. Augie Bennett grounded out to Carson Buber at shortstop in the second inning for his only at bat so far. Now Brown will come to the plate one and one. This one's going to be hit at Buber again in a kind of a short hop right in front of him. Tough play to judge, and that's going to get by him in, in the center center field. Mm. Yep, you can see Buber out there. He's saying, I need to get my glove out, get in front. He actually tried to. Just kind of crowd, sort of like uh, sort of like Rubenthal did, but uh, as a shortstop, he has to come get it. And he, he knows what he did there, and he'll he'll fix it. But um, ball was hit sharply, and he had to make a decision whether or not he's going to come get it or stay back. He got caught there on his heels a little bit and paid the price. So um, Carson Boober, one of the premier shortstops in, in the league here, just mm-hmm. got caught handcuffed there once. And first pitch swinging is Tyson Brown. He's going to get himself a base hit the other way in the left field. They're going to swing it. That's what they said. And a lot of first pitch swinging. And it's paid off in this inning, at least, on that pitch. Put the runners on one, on a first and second. So now the pitcher, who started off as the third baseman, Sam Menendez, will come to the plate. He drew himself a walk first time up. The only walk given up by Brown so far. Brown. Fires a fastball in the turf low, and Edwards has to stop it. That's ball one. Brown's one pitch away here. He has to remember he's got a great defense behind him. Double play ball here. Ground ball would be a, really all he needs. 1-0. Brown can't get that one to find the inside corner. Makes it 2-0. So far, Jameer Brown at 53 pitches, 32 thrown for strikes. 1 and 1, or excuse me, 2 0 is thrown for strike one. That's what they wanted to see out of Jameer today. They wanted to see him pound the strike zone, fill it up, you know, give him a lot of free bases, let the defense work, you know. 2 1. 
That one's called high, ball three. If there's been any part of his game to work on, it was his control, and today he really has it on, it has his command, and I'm sure Coach Zarnecki's uh, been working with him on that and seems to have it harnessed here today. 3-1 from Brown is into the other batter's box for ball four. So the bases are loaded, and that'll bring out a mound visit for catcher Braden Edwards and Coach Zarnecki. Second walk given up on the day. Same guy. Right? Yep. So two singles and a walk load the bases for Mercersburg. Down four to nothing here in the top of the fourth. Good opportunity for them. They only had one hit and one walk coming into this inning off of Brown. They had gone down striking out seven times in those first three innings. So not even a lot of contact made into the field of play so far. There was a first inning double by Gavin Williams. And that was their only hit before this fourth inning. Get the corners up here as uh, Martinsburg anticipating maybe something down the line they could come home with. Middles back looking for a double play. First pitch from Brown to Marquez is taken for strike one. Brown with the wind up, 0 1, finds the zone for strike two. So now with the bases loaded, Brown can get himself into his regular wind up, maybe find himself some more comfort. We'll see. Here's the 0 2, and it's taken, but a little high. Marquez, he's able to work the count back to one and two. This will step into the left side. Batter's box. There's a one, two. This is going to be a base hit up in the center field. Mercer's is going to score one. Second run coming home. Throw in by Grove. Took himself a second. So that's two runs across for Mercersburg. Here in the top of the fourth, make it four to two. Bulldogs lead down to just two runs. Yeah, nice piece of hitting there by um, Marquez. He two strikes, just try to push Dwyer back up the middle. Jameer was throwing the contact there and uh, got a hop out there to Grove. He had a shot to, to uh, make, make a play at home, but the ball kind of skipped on him there and wasn't able to uh, come up clean with it, but uh, came into the cutoff man and held the runners to first and second. <clears throat> So now Derek Park will step in for his second at bat. Another left handed hitter for Mercersburg. Strike one on the first pitch. And now Brown runs the second pitch inside a little bit. So even the count at one apiece. Runners still on first and second. Tying run for Mercersburg on first base in this 4 to 2 ball game. Brown. This one's hit up the middle, but chance for two. Boober's going to get it. Step on second. Park dies for first base, but not in time as the third out is made. So make it a 6-3 double play to leave two runners on base. But Mercersburg does cut the lead in half from 4-0 to 4-2. The Bulldogs will come to the plate in the bottom of the fourth and try to extend back out that lead. Take a 60-second break and be back with more West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%. Parsons' goal of financing for all. And Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park, Martinsburg, leading Mercersburg. Mercersburg Academy, 4-2 to two in the bottom of the fourth inning, which is brought to you by Mother Shuckers. Mother Shuckers Crab Shack, located at 1014 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. If you don't like it, shuck it up, Buttercup. Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin on the call today for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Colin McLaughlin is our on-site producer. And back at the studio is Nick Verzellini. Leading off the bottom of the fourth for Martinsburg will be the leadoff hitter, Isaac Grove. His first pitch is a base hit just past the glove of Bennett over at shortstop. So a quick opening leadoff base runner for Martinsburg here in the bottom of the fourth. So third hit given up by Sam Menendez so far in his second inning of work that he starts. That'll bring up Carson Boober. 0 for 1, hit by pitch, and a fly out to center field. First pitch is taken for a strike. That's where Martinsburg can be dangerous. <clears throat> you get Isaac Grove on with all those uh, guys behind him here. They can, they can bunt, they can run, they steal. And speaking of that, Grove will attempt the steal, and he just barely slides in at second base safely with a stolen base. And it was another, it was kind of the same situation for the last stolen base down there at second base, where Bennett had to reach across his body for the, for the ball and then come back and swipe through with the tag, and that was just enough for him to come in safe. It was a great throw by the catcher. I mean, he come up. He wasn't a great throw. It was a great pop time by the catcher and a great arm. He almost got Grove there, as we've seen uh, umpire Matt Heido out there kind of held his call there and not sure exactly if he uh, was just kind of waiting to see if Grove come off or what, but uh, very, very close play there at second base. 2-1 pitch to Boober. is going to catch the outside corner for strike two. <clears throat> I think you're giving some signals back and forth. So his man on second, uh, catcher went out to talk to his pitcher about the signals so that as it couldn't, uh, as it grove at second, couldn't see the signal and, and then give it to Carson Boober. So maybe they went to a second or third sign. Seemed like a little bit of a smirk from Grove out at second base after, after that mound meeting. And Boober's going to line this one at third base right into the glove of Gavin Williams. A little bad luck there as that ball was getting down the line, but Gavin Williams over there a lot taller than Menendez, who was at, started at third. So uh, yep. an inning or two ago, that probably gets down the line. But uh, young man over third extended himself, and his vertical was up there pretty good. Snagged that thing out of the air. Great job by Grove to retreat and not get doubled off. So that'll make it a runner on second with one out for Braden Oviedo. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Oviedo two for two with two singles. First one was a bunt attempt that was a little mishandled by pitcher Marquezzi, but I think could be ruled an infield single very easily. And now this one is going to kind of slip away from Menendez and hit Oviedo for a hit by pitch. So he's going to take first base for the third time today. Here comes Christian Alter, one of the uh, RBI uh, leaders on this team. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what his uh, batting average is, but I'm sure it has to be up there with some of the EPAC leaders, if, and uh, if not one of the top in the area. Alter coming to the plate to Pink and White by Frank Ocean. Great song and a great album. <laughs> First pitch from Menendez. Strike one taken. 
As he wears the purple arm guard and the purple oven mitt, sliding mitt. When he gets on base, that is, not now. He has the purple uh, sleeve there, I believe. The 0-1 is going to be a breaking pitch that Alter has to duck out of the way of. Makes it 1-1, one and one, so one ball, one strike, one out. Runners on first and second in a 4-2 to two ball game. Martinsburg trying to extend their lead over Mercersburg. And the runners will go. Double steal, throw down the third. Not in time. Sliding in with his second stolen base of the inning is Isaac Grove. Now, of course, Oviedo steals second easily with no throw over. So the double steal works. Now two runners in scoring position. Big time steals right there from those guys. It was basically stealing off the pitcher. The catcher has a tremendous arm. So uh, it, it's a read that, that Isaac and the coaching staff got off of the pitcher there, and they were able to get a big break to get to third and second. 2-1, hit the opposite way, down the first baseline, and in the right field. This is going to bring home two runs, and Christian Alter, using his speed, is going to slide in at second base as Tyson Brown, probably shading over towards center a little bit against the right-handed pitcher, or right-handed hitter, had to go over for that one. So it's a two-RBI double for Christian Alter, make it four RBIs on the day for Alter. Yeah, he's an RBI machine. Like I said, he's just uh, seeing the ball really well, using all parts of the field, staying behind the baseball, not trying to do too much. And, uh, you know, uh, Martinsburg sets the table with uh, Grove and Boober and and uh, and Oviedo, and, and, he, and he just uh, takes what's given to him, takes those RBIs, opportunities, and cashes in. <clears throat> now Ben Reisenweber comes up as the lead for Martinsburg to back up to four the way it was last time they were up the bat. Mercersburg was able to get their first two runs up on the board in the top of the fourth, make it four to two after it was four to nothing. But now, once again, a four-run deficit that they would have to overcome. A 1-0 to Reisenweber taken for strike one. Curveball there, floated in. Rasmussen kind of backed off, and it uh, had a little movement there at the end. And Menendez looks in, takes a look back at Alter at second. And this one's going to be hit on the ground past the glove of Williams. Could have potentially made the play. And Alter's going to come around third, and he's going to score. So making an RBI single for Ben Reisenweber. And make it a five-run lead, 7-2 to two for Martinsburg. And just stayed behind the baseball and took what to give him there. And didn't try to do too much. You know, the pitch, the velocity's not there at the moment. So Martinsburg being forced to just stay within themselves and uh, you know, stay behind the baseball as much as possible. And, you know, early when Menendez come in, we've seen a couple of fly-outs that were kind of weak, which is induce, an indicative of, uh, you know, being out in front. Rupenthal coming back up the plate. Owen Rupenthal is 0 for 2 on the day. I guess 0 for 1. His first time around was a fielder's choice. Foul ball nicked the catcher a little bit, so umpire Jeff King checks on his catcher, walks the ball out to the pitcher, and uh, show of class. Six hits given up so far by Menendez, and Oh, we're going to go ahead and make it seven right back up the middle, almost right at second, the second base back. I think it's Just, if, you, if you would have struck a line from the point at home plate to the point at second base back, that ball followed it right down. It went right over the pitcher's mound and right over the second base. Doesn't get much up the middle more than that. That was an up the middle. So now it's runners on first and second with one out. For Jameer Brown. Martinsburg starting to figure out Menendez. The out that he did record was a sharply hit ball by Boober. That was a proud, yep. more than likely ends up in the corner of most third basemen. That slow breaking <coughs> ball that Menendez throws as he throws one of them there for ball one inside. If it, it can hang up there a little bit and it's it's slow enough that Martinsburg gets a more time to take a look at it. 
They've been able to make contact so far. The 1-0 pitch is low for ball two. Menendez hails from Georgetown, Delaware. So he's he's far from home at the moment. And Brown's going to hit this one into right center. Davenport's going to go over and make the play for the second out. So that's the second fly out to Davenport in center for Brown so far today. So he's been good up on the mound, but hasn't quite been able to find the same success at the plate. Two fly outs and a hit by pitch. Davenport playing center field for uh, Mercersburg, a post-grad uh, young man from out of uh, the Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Has a really good arm. Martinsburg hasn't quite tested him. We've seen him test uh, the left and right fielder's arms at times uh, on base hits and scoring at home, but they've yet to test the uh, center fielder on anything that they might have. he might have a play on. Two outs now for Braden Edwards, who swings through the first pitch for strike one. He wanted that one, but the bottom fell out of it. Gravity pitch. Yep. Ryzen Weber on second. Rupenthal on first with two outs. Here's the 0-1. And it'll be just a little high for ball one. Three runs up on the board in this half inning for the Bulldogs. They've responded to the two runs that Mercersburg put up in the top half, which is what you want to do, which is what good teams do. They they take the momentum back. Edwards just past the glove of the first baseman, Marquezzi. And here comes Weber from second. He's going to slide in and make it an RBI single for Edwards and make it 8-2 Martinsburg. See, Martinsburg will test the corner outfielders, but uh... – you know, that, could have, that was a pretty close play there at the plate, but Martinsburg willing to take a shot. But generally when the ball's hit out there to center field and there's going to be a close play, Martinsburg kind of holds up as Williams has a pretty big arm, or excuse me, Davenport has a pretty big arm out there. But they were willing to, they were willing to uh, test Brown's arm out there and came out successful there. So now it's a four-run inning for the Bulldogs. Keegan Everhart will come up to bat. He swings at the first pitch but chops it over. Foul to Aaron Byler in the third base coach's box. R.J. Brown in running for the catcher after a single, the RBI single from Edwards. Now Brown was third out in the last inning. Now Everhart's going to hit this one to the shortstop for the third out as he steps on the bag at second and makes the force out. So that'll end the inning. But it's a four-run inning. For Martinsburg, makes it 8-2 to two against Mercersburg. We'll go to the fifth, see if Mercersburg Academy can cut back into that lead the way they did in the fourth. But now they have more work to do, down by six runs. We'll take a 60-second break, and we'll be back with more West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Top of the fifth here at P.O. Faulkner Park. It's an 8-2 lead for Martinsburg over Mercersburg. Top of the fifth inning on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. It's brought to you by L.A. Roberts Jewelers, committed to excellence in quality, design, and craftsmanship. Located at 146 North Queen Street in Martinsburg. Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin with you here. Colin McLaughlin, our on-site producer. And Nick Verzellini back at the studio. 
It'll be the fourth inning of work, excuse me, fifth inning of work for Jameer Brown up on the mound as he's only given up three hits, two walks so far, and two runs to go along with his seven strikeouts. Yeah, he was rolling along there. Mercerberg finally did uh, uh, capitalize a little bit on a couple of fastballs last inning and get some guys on base and get the, you know, the walk and a couple of hits, and they were able to cut into that lead. But Marsberg quickly uh, gives Jameer that run support right back. So One and one, and one count to Brown is taken for ball two. Thomas Davenport leading things off at the top of the lineup, and that one he has a duck out of the way of, just barely misses him. He's going to take a little nervous energy from that and run back and get the baseball because that ball come right up in his jaw line there as uh, Jameer reached back to get a little bit and got away from him. So Davenport seeing if he can be a leadoff base runner for Mercersburg. And, well, Davenport started the walk down towards first, but that's strike two on the inside corner. Martinsburg does have a lefty in the bullpen. Um, they had talked about Parker Robinson maybe throwing today, and that would make sense. He's a lefty. Jameer Brown, again, his fifth inning of work. We'll have to check the pitch count as now plays over to the other side. Hit the other way by Davenport over to Rupenthal at first base. He'll just toss it over to Brown for the first out. Nice play there by Rupenthal. Once again, ball hit sharp, stays down on it, just becomes a, a goalie there and just tries to block it and uh, keep it in front of him and he gloves it clean. And then great job by the sophomore on the mound with his PFP covering the bag as Jameer ran over and covered, soft toss, and ends up being an easy out on a tough play. This is the 69th pitch from Jameer Brown. It's going to be hit the other way by Gavin Williams. Very similar to the way that he got a double in the first inning, but this one's lined right at Keegan Everhart in left field for the second out. They finally were able to keep him off the bases. His first time they retired today for Williams. <clears throat> so make it a ground out. G3 to 1 for Davenport, and then an F7. Fly out to left field for Gavin Williams for the first two outs. First pitch to Brody Collins in this at bat is ball one. The wind up in the pitch from Brown Chopper to third base. Oviedo throws it across the diamond, and it's caught over at first by Rupenthal. Three up, three down. Very quick inning of work for Jameer Brown. Keeps himself at 70 pitches through five innings. And with that, we will go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 8-2 to two Martinsburg over Mercersburg. We'll take a 60-second break and be back. With more West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Hey, it's Cody from Cody's Auto Body. You're a potty mouth. But we do a really great job fixing cars after an accident. I know, but you're still a potty mouth. I'm possibly the best friend you could ever have. You are, but potty mouth. If you need your car repaired, come to Cody's Auto Body, located at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, because that's Cody's with a T for f***ing trust. See, potty mouth. Ugh, leave me alone. Another pitching change for Mercersburg as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Pitching change brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance. This time it is Reed Davis, number 22 for Mercersburg, a freshman from Westchester, Pennsylvania. that will come in to pitch in an 8-2 ball game as Martinsburg leads Mercersburg. 
And Menendez comes off the mound and goes to second base. And just a look across the diamond, and it looks like that a, it'll be Menendez just simply checking in at second base for Derek Park. So Park will go to the bench, and Menendez moves from the mound to second base. And Reed Davis will get to see the top of the lineup for Martinsburg, Isaac Grove, to start things out. 72 pitches officially for Jameer Brown through five innings. I think Reed Davis is entering in Park's spot. The bottom of the fifth inning on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is brought to you by the Wagner Law Firm, West Virginia's premier DUI defense attorney. Visit WestVirginiaDUILawyers.com. Martinsburg back right where they'd like to be with the leadoff guy. See if uh, Isaac Grove can get this thing started for him once again. First pitch taken for strike one. So it'll be Isaac Grove starting things off, who has reached base twice on a hit-by-pitch and a regular base on balls, and then had himself a single last inning to start off the fourth. He takes ball one, or excuse me, ball two. Two and one. And this 2-1 pitch will be popped up. Davis is going to get under this one and be called off by the third baseman, Williams. And he makes the catch for the first out. Straight up in the air. The young pitcher went over and took a shot at it, but the upperclassman third baseman called him off and made the play with the proper play. First time Grove has been retired tonight. So Boober, so far 0 for 2 on the day. He was also hit by a pitch in the first inning. He's flown out to center and lined out to the third baseman. This pitch from Davis is outside. Let's make that 2 and 0. Next pitch. Boober, they're going to say he swung around. I think he held it in place, thinking, uh, "There's, uh, don't you see it here? Uh, it doesn't look like I did, but make that a 2-1 count after strike one. And that pitch, breaking ball, catches the plate for strike two. Well, Martinsburg trying to feel out the new pitcher. On the mound for Mercersburg. 2-2. Boober's going to hit this one into left field. Just barely foul. Hooked just into foul territory. Otherwise, that would have been extra bases for sure. Yeah, he hit the ball pretty well on the nose. Just got out in front of it a bit. And lefty tried to come in with a backdoor curve. He stayed back on it as long as he could. But I had to pull the trigger just a, a hair too soon and ripped it down the line. But just foul. <clears throat> So 2-2 two, two count with one out with a six-run lead for Boober up at the plate. And the 2-2 two, is going to bounce inside. So run the count full at 3-2. and two. That girl softball is going to play a game up there today. It's starting to get loose as we are the tail end of this matinee. And the full count pitch bounces in front of the plate for ball four. So Carson Boober draws the one-out walk. That'll bring up Braden Oviedo in the six-run game. Oviedo, two for two, two singles and a hit by pitch. He was able to come across the plate and score last inning after stealing a base on a double steal with, with Grove. Part of the four-run bottom of the fourth. First pitch is outside for ball one. Got a little cloud cover. Got the lights on. Or maybe it's an eclipse. <laughs> That'd be interesting if we were getting two, two eclipses in just a couple days, right? This one's in the dirt. Goober goes down to second, and he's going to get there in time. Collins tried to throw it down. 
wasn't particularly close, but make it a wild pitch that advances Boober to second. Yeah, the ball kicked uh, in the left-hander's batter's box. Boober got a good read on it. It's a good thing because catcher back here, uh, this young man, uh, Birdie Collins, he has a pretty good arm on him. 2-0, finds the zone for strike one. Mercersburg not holding Boober much. Oviedo is going to hit this one weakly towards third base, and that one's one hops in front and past the first baseman. So that'll be a throwing error that gets Oviedo on base and brings Boober around from second base all the way to score. Yeah, that ball got away, hit the fence, rolled down a little bit. Oviedo's watching it. <clears throat> Not much he could do as uh, this throw was a little shorter to second. He was kind of slow up there, not sure, not sure what kind of bounce it would take. But in the meantime, Boober takes advantage of the throw and comes on around to score. Christian Alter. So now 9-2 to two Bulldogs. Oviedo on first with one out. Christian Alter at the plate with four RBIs so far today. He'll take the first pitch high and outside for the first ball. Martinsburg matching their hit total from last night at 10 already. Alter so far, a two RBI single and a two RBI double with a fly out to right field in between. Two O is the count. Alter versus Reed Davis. Davis's 2-0 pitch, not able to find the zone. 3-0 now. Looks like we got a pinch hitter up in the on-deck circle, Jackson Steen, in place of Ben Reisenweber as the 3-0 finds the zone for strike one. See what Alter can do. He's going to hit this one towards left center field, but it looks like it's going to be Davenport able to make the play, makes the catch, and that's the second out. So that will indeed bring up Jackson Steen for Ben Risenweber. Number 23, Steen, the senior, had himself a very good, successful basketball season. Now he'll step into the left-handed batter's box against the left-handed pitcher. And he's going to hit this one on the ground to Menendez at second, who is going to throw the ball on to first for the third out. So Martinsburg adds on a run, brings their lead up to seven. Makes it 9-2 to two here against Mercersburg. We'll take this 60-second break. And afterwards, it'll be the top of the sixth for Mercersburg. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Life is evolving. Over the past decade, the way we do almost everything has changed. Get on your phone, see something you like, click on it, and it shows up at your door. Why should the way you have your car serviced be any different? Why waste your time going to a dealership service department when Hager Sound Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to you? They service all makes, all models, and offer full parts and labor warranties. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to your door or office and service your vehicle while you're doing what you need to be doing, conducting that business meeting or mowing the lawn. Why take time out of your busy schedule when you don't have to? Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet's friendly, knowledgeable staff will come to you where you live or where you work for full service maintenance. From oil changes to tire rotations, brakes, batteries, multi-point inspections, they handle it all. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet is committed to delivering the best of the best to their customers. Trust them to service your vehicle where you're at, at home or at work. Skip the time-consuming and terminal wait at the dealership. Schedule your appointment at FordofHagerstown.com or HancockChevy.com. We move to the top of the sixth here from P.O. Faulkner Park. Top of the sixth on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is brought to you by Parsons Ford, 1400 Shepherdstown Road, and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons, new pitcher for the Bulldogs. Parker Robinson comes to the mound, checks in 
after five innings pitched by Jameer Brown. Brown gives up two runs, both earned, on four hits and two walks. He gets himself seven strikeouts after 72 pitches. 43 for strikes. He faced 21 batters. So now it'll be Parker Robinson's turn to try to close out the probably these last two innings for Martinsburg. Looks like Steen has taken over <clears throat> on, and left. It's moved the left fielder Keegan Everhart to second. Uh, looks like Logan Wilt is now going to play f- center field and has a grove spot. And I believe... Well, it looks like we may have a new right fielder as well. I think you're right. That does not look like uh, Christian Alter out there in right field. So, might be Braden Miller. Yep, Braden Miller out in right field. You're right. It's Logan Welt moving over to center. After the pinch hit by Jackson Steen, he goes to left. Everhart goes to second. And first batter that Parker Robinson gets to face is Hayden Shirk, cleanup hitter, left fielder for Mercersburg. First pitch to him was a ball. Counts 1-0. and Second pitch will be outside for ball two. Shirk so far today, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And a ground out to the first baseman. Here comes the 2-0 from Robinson. And that ball is hooked, foul, and out of play. Let's make the count 2-1. and one. So now Martinsburg looking at still Edwards behind the plate, Oviedo, Boober, Everhart, and Rupenthal left to right run the infield. 2-1 pitch strike. And Steen, Wilt, and Miller in the outfield left to right. Marker getting some players in here today. Uh, <clears throat> as they've got a commanding seven-run lead at the moment. The 2-2 is behind the batter, Shirk. Parker wants to make sure he's not uh, digging in there too deep. So it counts full here to the leadoff batter of the sixth inning. The windup and the pitch from Robinson. And that's going to be a low and outside for ball four. So leadoff walk gets Hayden Shirk, Mercersburg's cleanup hitter, on base for the first time today. Looks like the Martinsburg or Mercersburg coaches are just making sure that all of the changes are communicated. As we get a pinch runner, 13 for 15. Number Heard 13, that one called out. So yeah, Felix Kreese, senior, checks in as a pinch runner for Hayden Shirk. Shirk, just the left fielder, so not a courtesy runner. That'll be a pinch runner. First pitch to Augie Bennett is low for ball one. Mercersburg here, uh, if at all possible, they need to you know just keep passing the baton. But you know, Mark Parker Robinson throw to contact here with that defense behind him. Even though Martinsburg put a few guys in, Martinsburg still very stout. Um, all three of the guys in the outfield right now have played varsity baseball and, and can make plays. So, again, showing Martinsburg's depth as they are now uh, showing, I think, their eighth, possibly ninth pitcher of the year. It's made a I have to check in on that, but I think nine different pitchers have thrown for Martinsburg. Bennett hits this one in the center field. Wilt will come in on it and make the play for out number one. Bennett had been one for two so far today. He has been one of the two players for Mercersburg to come across and score. But that time flies out to center field. That'll bring Tyson Brown back up to the plate. He's the other 
player for Mercersburg to come across the plate. He got himself a single and then came around the score in the fourth inning, struck out looking in the second as he fouls off the first pitch. Parker Robinson doing a nice job here. Staying around the plate. Mixed his pitches there a little bit. The 0-1. Finds the zone. Strike two. Brown lets it go. Yeah, big curveball there that broke right in. A good good spin on that thing. Lefty on lefty. Froze a left-handed hitter. Now the 0-2. It's another breaking ball. Hit weakly over to the other side of the diamond. Oviedo fires the ball to first base for the second out. Yeah, like I said, you know, Parker could throw the contact here. His defense is stellar. I mean, you know, of course, they're not perfect by, it, uh, you know, by MLB standards, but they are as good as it gets, um, you know, in the, in the MLB, excuse me, in the high school level. They are just a tremendous defense, good arms on the corners. Good outfield has speed, tracks baseballs. First pitch to Menendez is a ball. So now runner has gotten himself to second base. That's now Felix Crease over there. But now with two outs and a 1-0 count to Menendez, who has been in a different position every time he's come up to the bat. Was at third base, then he was the pitcher, now he's the second baseman. He takes the 1-0 pitch high and outside for ball two. And Menendez 0 for 0 at the plate, and he's drawn two walks so far. Two of the three walks that Mercersburg's gotten themselves so far today is that next pitch is ball three. So he's shown a lot of patience on the at the plate so far today. He might draw himself a third walk. <laughs> Definitely been a, a guy who's uh, found his way on base here. And there it is, ball four outside. So that's the fourth walk of the day for Mercersburg. Third traditional one. The only other one was a hit by pitch thrown by Jameer Brown on Gavin Williams in the third inning. So all three times that Martinsburg has thrown four balls to a Mercersburg batter, it's been against Menendez. First pitch that Marquez sees is grounded the first base. Rupenthal will grab it and step on the bag at first for the third out. So a couple base runners on a couple walks. Thrown by Robinson, but they don't come across the score. Two more stranded on base. Keeps the game at 9-2. to two. We'll take a 60-second break and come back for the bottom of the sixth. Martinsbury's last chance to extend their lead, but for potentially closing it out in the top of the seventh. We'll take 60 seconds and be back with more West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. April is National Donate Life Month. WV Medicine is joining the effort to raise awareness for organ donation. Did you know that more than 100,000 people are waiting for life-saving organ transplants? One donor can save up to eight people through organ donation, provide sight for two people through cornea donation, and restore health for more than 75 people through tissue donation. Join WV Medicine and help spread awareness about the gift of donation. And if you haven't registered, visit registerme.org. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Reed Davis will come back out for his second inning of work for Mercersburg. Only gave up one run, one walk, and an error in the fifth inning. We'll see Lane DeLauder. It's a pinch hitter. You don't see that very much. Comes Lane DeLauder up to <clears throat> take some hacks at it here. He'll check in for the first baseman, Owen Rupenthal. And he'll take ball one on his first pitch. DeLauder pitched on was it Monday, the second to last game for Martinsburg after Boober pitched yesterday. He'll take ball two as well. The 
The Martins were going into their bench in these last two innings with the seven-run lead. 2-0 is a swing and a miss by DeLauder. He wanted that one, shook his head after that. You want to take a hack at that one. Two one count. Davis fires. And this one bounces in front of home plate for ball three. So two up is the six seven eight hitters for Martinsburg. On deck is Parker Robinson, the pitcher. Three ones fouled over to the Martinsburg dugout. Runs the count full. So it'll be Braden Edwards that's in the hole. Lane generally uh, on the pitcher's mound, getting DH4 here today, coming in, getting him, getting him a chance to take a hack at it. Full <coughs> count. Another one fouled over to the left side. So he's checking in for Rupenthal, the first baseman. We'll see if we get a different first baseman out in the seventh inning for Martinsburg. But they have gone pretty deep into the bench at this point. And the full count pitch again. Outside for ball four. <coughs> Parker Robinson going to take a hack at it. So it'll be lefty versus lefty as Parker Robinson gets his first crack at bat. And he's going to swing at the first pitch, and this one's going to fall into left center field for a single. Both uh, Davenport and Kreese couldn't quite get there. Might get a runner. For 14 for 20 is our next uh, substitution, as Caleb Deeds will pinch hit for Braden Edwards. Oh, I see. I see what, they, what he's done there. His walk-up music is Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Caleb For Deeds. Caleb Dirty Deeds. Takes ball one to start off the at-bat. Runners on first and second. No outs. Deeds will swing and miss at this one. Brings the count even. If Martinsburg is able to get three runs up on the board in this half inning, they won't have to go out and close things out in the top of the seventh. So currently the eighth spot, see if Martinsburg is able to do that. That would technically make Deeds at the plate the winning run. Another ball outside and high. Runs the count to two and one. Earhart on a run. Drew Earhart, yep, courtesy runner over at first for Parker Robinson, the pitcher. I guess they sort of just forgot to do that at the beginning of the at-bat. Coach Ballard trying to see who's left on that bench as he's pretty much emptied it. <coughs> Indeed, tries to hold back, but he had already committed to the swing. Counts now two and two after that strike. Deeds will step back to the plate. Reed Davis to the mound. Here's the pitch. And it hits him. So Deeds will trot down the first, and the bases will be loaded with no outs. Looks like we're going to have R.J. Brown. Brown now will be pinch hitting for Keegan Everhart. Nine to two Martinsburg over Mercersburg here in the bottom of the sixth. Dylan Bishop and Trip Tobin for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Colin McLaughlin is the on-site producer, and Nick Verzellini is back at the studio. Martinsburg has the walk-off run on first base. Should they continue this inning? At the moment, the young. Uh, Lefty on the mound for Mercerberg is yet not finding the strike zone well. 
Walk to Lauder, base hit to Parker Martin, who's now being run for by Earhart, and Deeds with a hit by pitch. 1-0 pitch to Brown, finds his own for strike one. So if he can clear the bases, that'll that'll be a walk-off, make it a 10-run game. Davis tried to prevent that. This one's hit on the ground to short. They might be able to get two. They get one at second, but it's beat out by Brown. So just a fielder's choice. RBI as Lane DeLauder will come across the plate and score. It's now 10 to 2. Runners on the corners with one out. Here comes Logan Wilt. And Wilt pinch hitting, or he's already checked into the game in center field for Isaac Grove. It'll be his first at bat that he gets. Logan Wilt. First pitch, swinging and missing for strike one. Logan wearing those orange cleats. <clears throat> Been a regular at times in the lineup, depending on the pitcher. Holding down left field pretty well. And Wilt's going to hit this one just blooping over the head of Bennett at shortstop. And that's going to allow the runner to score. So Drew Earhart, the courtesy runner for the pitcher, is able to make this 11-2 as he runs home from third base. It's an RBI single for Logan Wilt. And now with the pretty much the entire bench cleared out, Carson Boober is going to get one more at bat with one out. Runners on first and second. He'll take strike one in this 11-2 ball game now. The 0-1, Boober's going to take a big cut at this one, hit it foul over to the batting cages. Counts 0-2. Wilt at first. R.J. Brown at second. Here's the pitch, and they're going to hit this one in the center field. Davenport's going to have to come in on this one, and he makes the play for out number two. So quiet day at the plate for Carson Buber. Makes him 0 for 3 with two walks. And now it'll be the fifth at bat for Braden Oviedo, who reached base with a single in the first. And the third got himself on base with a hit by pitch in the fourth inning and then with a throwing error in the fifth inning. First pitch to him is outside for ball one. If he can find some green here, uh, get the ball to the outfield. R.J. Brown with lots of speed. He's generally the, a lot of a courtesy runner for the pitcher or catcher. He can find himself home. Could be a shortened game or. Yeah, Oviedo's going to hit this one deep to left field. It's over the wall, and it's fair. And that'll walk well, it off. You don't see that too often in a nine-run game, a walk-off home run. But it is. 14-2 is going to be the final score. Three-run shot by Braden Oviedo. He steps on home, and that's the ball game. So Mercersburg not able to get themselves to the top of the seventh. And Martinsburg closes it out with a big-time home run by Braden Oviedo. That thing curved around the pole. You've seen everybody leaning, leaning, looking, and kind of trying to yeah, It seemed like we pretty it much fair. <laughs> off the bat knew it had the distance. It found that it was just keeping it fair as it went around that pole as we watched uh, as we watched home plate umpire Jeff King lean out there to see that he showed the uh, – the home run uh, signal, and that ended the game there as Oviedo uh, crushed that pitch. I believe it was just a two-run shot uh, uh, by Oviedo, just the runner on first base. There's a runner over first and second. Oh, no, you're right. I was mm -hmm. looking at the bottom of the yep. the bottom of the, the order. I had it right the first time. Should have trusted myself. Yep. So yeah, 14 to two is our final score. 
We'll go ahead and we'll take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll get our interviews with Colin McLaughlin, with the player of the game, and with Coach Aaron Byler. We'll go right to the post-game show after this two-minute break. It's West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. The Classical Christian Academy at Bethel is helping create extraordinary futures. So we've seen improvements in, in our boys on the, as I said, arithmetic, reading and writing. I worked in the county, I worked in public school, and that's what I knew. Um, and I knew I wanted to be able to give her more, so I would recommend this to anyone. You know, our daughter has thrived here. Um, the, the family-like environment is exactly what she needed. The Classical Christian Academy at Bethel in Martinsburg, equipping children to lead lives of significant impact. UH. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. By this team. Fifteen seconds. Five. Welcome into the Palace Lounge postgame show here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 following a 14-2 victory in six innings for Martinsburg over Mercersburg. Braden Oviedo's three-run home run in the bottom of the sixth secured the 10-run rule victory for Martinsburg. Postgame brought to you by Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Bowl with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. And check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. The game summary brought to you by Mansion Friday Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. It was two runs on four hits and one error for Mercersburg and 14 runs on 13 hits, no errors for the Bulldogs. A trip as we await Coach Byler with Colin and the player of the game with Colin. Some thoughts on this one. You know, Martinsburg, I think they here at the end of the game started kind of just lagging a little bit. I was just kind of looking at some of the stats. And since that loss to St. Mary's Reich, and they've just, have, you know, and I'm sure Colin's going to uh, talk about it there a little bit with Coach Bowler, but they have just destroyed the opponents since then, except for a 2-1 victory over a very good Penfield New York team. They have, you know, come out swinging and, uh, you know, they just hit the cover off the ball. Average about 12 hits a game and about 10 runs a game, and just, just uh, you know, not really anybody even close to him at this point. All right, let's send it down to Colin with our player of the game, Christian Alter. Thank you, Dylan and Trip. Down here with Christian Alter, today's player of the game. Congratulations, by the way. Two hit day for you. Four RBIs. Just talk a little bit about your approach at the plate today. Um. Well. This early, I was hunting fastball. Anything that was a strike, I wasn't going to take it. I was going to swing. I mean, for me, first pitch or any strike is usually that's like the best pitch to hit. And the last over the last week, I found most of my success being aggressive at the plate. And I'm just trying to continue to carry that over each game and perform. Your team, as of late, just absolutely dominant especially offensively, you one of the leaders 
in that category of RBIs and swell some other things, just leading by example. Talk about, I guess, the team chemistry so far this year, though. Well, as the games have gone on, I feel like as a team, we've all grew together and we've learned a lot. And, like, this stretch we've had with being in Myrtle and coming back playing three games, I think that was big for us to know that we can repeatedly play games and win and compete every each and every game we come out and play. So. All right, final question. How can I get curls in the back of my head like you, man? You got the flow going. Well, I have a perm, so my curls aren't real, <laughs> but, yeah. Well, appreciate it, and best of luck to you the rest of the season. Send it back up to you guys maybe for a little bit, unless Coach, it looks like, is ready. So we'll keep it down here instead. Coach, congratulations on another win. Before we look at the big picture, just give us your thoughts about today's game first. Well, I, I think you got to give our guys credit there for, for you know, what they did offensively and kind of fighting through it. I mean, I think, you know, like eight games in ten days or something. So they're tired. I'm tired. Um, just proud of them for, for gutting it out there. Big picture, since the loss that you guys took during Myrtle Beach, you've responded and just absolutely dominated everybody in your path. I know Tripp has the numbers up there. I didn't have time to memorize it all, but I know he'll give it to everybody tuned in later on. Just talk a little bit about how they've responded, though, in your mind. Well, I don't think you ever want to lose, um, but I think we felt a little bit of pressure, you know, come off of us, and I think we're just playing relaxed now, and, and we're and we're just having good at bats. Like that, like I called Christian Alter today a baseball player. Like that ball we hit down the right field line, that's just a great baseball bat, you know. Um, so we're just doing things, you know, team-wise. We're getting bunts down and, and just doing things that, that are important to, to make sure we have run production. We're able to put a lot of pressure on the defense with, doing the right baseball thing so just proud of them for that switch over to today's pitching from brown and robinson jameer brown man that's a that's a great wednesday start for him especially he had a little trouble his last start up in cumberland with finding the strike zone he goes five strong and and parker robinson's i mean parker robinson's a senior that's been on this baseball team for four years and he's just a, a great teammate uh, outstanding young man he'll be one of those kids in national honor society tonight that we talk about and uh, just proud of him for accepting his role and coming in and, and doing the job. All right, anything else? Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Colin, our player of the game, Christian Alter. Player of the game is brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley, and Jefferson Medical Centers, leading healthcare here and everywhere. Get you some of our game stats for Trip. Let's us close out with his final thoughts on this one. Game Stats brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Visit them online at FordofHagerstown.com. Winning pitcher today is Jameer Brown, who pitched five innings, gave up two runs on four hits and two walks, and had seven strikeouts. Parker Robinson comes on in the sixth, pitches a clean inning in terms of hits and runs, gives up two walks, but 72 pitches for, for Jameer Brown, 17 for Parker Robinson, and... Through the lineup for Martinsburg, they were able to, to get an RBI from Logan Wilt on, a, on one hit. Braden Oviedo gets three RBIs on that home run to close things out. Christian Alter, two hits, four RBIs on the day. Ben Reisenweber got himself an RBI on one hit. Braden Edwards had three RBIs on two hits. R.J. Brown had an RBI on no hits. It was a fielder's choice RBI in the end. Mercersburg. Marquez goes two innings, gives up two hits, two runs, and a walk, two strikeouts. Menendez, the losing pitcher, two innings, a third and a fourth, gave up eight hits and a walk, six earned runs. And then Reed Davis, one and two-thirds inning, three hits, six runs, five earned, and two walks. So that's the pitching for Mercersburg, and it's a two-RBI single for Thomas Marquez that – Got the two RBIs across for Mercersburg today. Trip, your final thoughts on this game, 14-2 to two Martinsburg. Yeah, just another dominant performance by Martinsburg. I mean, you know, we talked about it a little bit, and, and Coach Byler, and, and, and uh, it, it, they were talking about, you know, since the loss. I mean, I just kind of don't some quick numbers. Since they lost to St. Mary's Riken down there, they have, uh, in six games, they've racked up 73 hits and 64 runs, as opposed to only giving up 28 hits and 13 runs. That's, that's 12 hits a game. And not only are they getting 12 hits a game, but they're making uh, 
you know, that they're taking advantage of all those base runners, um, scoring at a click of about ten and a half runs a game, only giving up about two runs a game. So, um, you know, since then, since that loss, they've they, they avenged that loss to St. Mary's with a with a nine run victory later in the week, showing their depth of pitching as they as on the fourth day of the tournament they were able to put quality pitching on the mound with Ben Rasen Webers and Rikens had kind of run out of pitching. And uh, then the seven nothing victory over Jefferson, just just phenomenal what they've been able to do uh, since they got that monkey, that undefeated monkey off their back. Three mercy run rules, and then uh, you know just the depth that they have uh, to be able to come out here and throw two guys that we haven't seen, you know, in what two weeks, and come out here and just have phenomenal performances. Just shows that depth, and then to unload that bench and that outfield really not being any worse. Uh, worse for wear have have tremendous depth at second base, third base. They move guys around. Um, you know they, um, you know, barring the the catching situation, which which uh, as a Grove can catch, and they also have a, another fellow down there, Sean, who comes in and and can do some catching. But other than that, they have varsity experience across the board. You know, one and two deep, and um, you know what Owen Rupenthal has been able to do and been stepping up, been rising wherever that pitching staff. They're just going to be really tough to beat if they continue to give their pitchers run support, and uh, and not to mention the defense out there. So, what they've done since that loss, like you said, is, is loose, played relaxed. Uh, it's hard to play loose and relaxed when you're in the middle of the grind of that season. It continues as they have a 130 game on Friday. You have to go to Greenbrier and play a doubleheader and start all over again next week. So, um, just what they've. Uh, been able to, to produce day in and day out, not on the not only on Fridays or Tuesdays, but also on Wednesdays and Saturdays. It's just been fun to watch this year with these guys. All right, and with that, we will wrap things up from P.O. Faulkner Park after a 14-2 victory for Martinsburg over Mercersburg. For Trip Tobin next to me, color commentator, I'm Dylan Bishop, and thanks to Colin McLaughlin, our on-site producer, and Nick Verzellini back in the studio. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday evening. And a great rest of your week here. This has been West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. You've been listening to West Virginia High School Baseball. Today's game broadcast has been brought to you by Parsons Ford, Brock's, the Hefley Motor Company, the Wagner Law Firm, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, the Skinner Law Firm, the Browns Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's, Carter Myers Automotive, Century 21 Modern Realty Results, The Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Mother Shuckers, L.A. Roberts Jewelers, the Dutch Miller Auto Group, and the Mansion Freddy Law Firm. For the continued excitement of high school, college, and Major League Baseball, keep it tuned to FM 106.5, AM 740, Comcast Cable Channel 10, and online talkradiowrnr.com. All rights reserved.